CAD 4 class. So <clears throat> as I mentioned in the previous week, we'd start off just showing off the submissions for the homework. So um, as of right now, it seems like not everyone is enrolled in the Google Classroom class. Uh, right now I see, I think I had like four, maybe five students. So make sure you join that, very important. If you need the code, just ask. Um, I see someone's asking for it, so let me pull that up. I will give the code I put in the chat to Mr. Chung. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. But as a reminder, there will be two assignments each week. One for the in-class work, which you'll submit at the end of the class, and one for the homework, which you'll submit by Tuesday. So it would have been yesterday. Um, don't worry if it's late. Just still turn it in. But if you turn it in by Tuesday, I'll put up your model on the slide the next day. So um, since the first week, um, and I know like not everyone had the code, that's fine. But starting next week, if I don't get that many submissions, I'll probably ask some people to screen share just so we can all see what we're doing and to make sure you really get all the practice since kind of the point of the class is to make sure you get a lot of models to practice two a week. And by the end of the class, you'll have a lot more experience. So as an overview for this week, um, we'll be going over some more of the 3D tools. So last week, we kind of focused on these like flat, flat objects, these geometrical things that you can do in sketches. Now we'll start going into more of 3D, some various um, tools that some of you have used before, but perhaps not as extensively as you will want to. So as usual, pull up on shape. And we will get into the demo. And last week, I know at the beginning, I may have gone too fast for some people. Um, I may do that again. But if you think I am, just send me a message in the chat and I'll make sure to keep that in mind. Um, like your feedback really is the most important thing, just to make sure the class is good for everyone. And so with that, we'll kind of head into it as kind of a preview. This week's challenges are going to be either these geometric shapes, a coffee mug, or a pencil. I know some of you saw the pencil before at the end of CAD 3. And so just so you have what it takes to model these objects, we'll start going over these tools. So we'll begin by kind of the quintessential CAD problem of how do you model a sphere? Any takers? Could be one word, one sentence. How would you make a sphere? Um, what would we like create a circle, extrude it, and then like do uh, what would we call it? Um, maybe fillet it? Fillet it, yeah. So that's certainly an option. And I guess I can kind of quickly demonstrate that just to show, convince everyone that it does work. So what Peyton is saying is, maybe it'd start out with something like that. Extrude it. And fill it in. 
And as long as the radius of the fillet is um, equal to that of the cylinder or the circle that you drew, then this does produce a sphere. But what I also saw in the chat, um, another comment was that you can revolve. And so you'll notice like there are several drawbacks to doing a sphere in this way. One thing is that I made a one inch radius sphere, but what if I then later decide that I actually needed like a 1.1 inch radius sphere? I can change this dimension, but then I also need to update kind of the radius of the fillet because it's not a sphere anymore. And so um, this is kind of what we refer to as like robustness. So you want to design your models in such a way that if you, if your requirements change later or you need to change your design at a later time, you want to make it as easy as possible for the entire model to be updated without having to do additional changes like I would here to change this into um, a sphere again. Um, and you see, you can run into problems like that where you have to figure out values, calculate things, um, so another suggestion that we had was to revolve it. And so to demonstrate how that works, um, the second 3D tool, these two are probably the most fundamental ones, extrude and revolve. And so for revolve, you need a sketch profile just like you do to extrude, but you need one more thing and that's an axis of revolution. You need to define where you're going to revolve about since that can kind of affect what you want to do, right? So to make a sphere, maybe some of you can see where this is going. If you take a circle and you kind of to rotate it about its center, where the outer edge of the circle sweeps out is kind of the surface of a sphere. And so if I were to sweep this entire circular profile, and I sweep it about the axis, you can see that it creates the sphere. And so just to show that again, the revolve tool is the second 3D tool. If you click it, there are two things that you have to select. The first thing is just like extrude, where you have to pick a region. So I pick my region. And the second thing is different. Extrude doesn't have this, but revolve has this. This is your axis, and you need to pick a line somewhere. And once you pick those two things, it'll allow you to create the model. And so if you ask most people how they would make a sphere, this is probably what they would say. Since now, if I decide later that I need a sphere of slightly larger radius, all I have to do is change that one sketch and the whole thing updates and it's good. And so hopefully that starts to give you some idea of when you should use the Revolve tool, um, what it's good for. Uh, another classic example, what if I change the axis of revolution? Um, it's not fully defined, but don't worry about it. Just a demonstration. If I have something like this, any predictions on what shape I will get if I revolve the circle about this axis? Maybe an oval? An oval, okay. What kind of oval? Just like a stretched out sphere, do you think? A torus? A torus, I, it's another good answer. Um, I won't keep you in suspense for too long. The end result is, yes, you do get a torus. Maybe it's an easier question for those of you who have taken um, vector geometry or calculus, but you can see kind of what it's doing. Um, if I reveal the sketch again, you can see this axis. So the, the axis is always the center. And then you take your profile, which is a circle, you sweep it around the axis and you create this shape. So if I asked you to create a donut, this is perhaps the only easy way to do it. Well, that's not true, but it, it is definitely an easier way to do it than trying to fill it like a circle that you extruded. So. As you start getting into more complex models, 
things in real life, always ask yourself, should I extrude this or should I revolve this? And I'll show you one more just classic example that demonstrates um, what you want to think about or why you want to think about this. Let's say that you're trying to model a cake like this, one of these like tiered cakes that has like three layers of cylinders stacked on top of each other. So when you first start to learn CAD, the first thing perhaps, perhaps not, that comes to mind is you extrude a big cylinder and then on top of that, you sketch another circle, you extrude another cylinder. On top of that one, you sketch another circle, you extrude that into the third cylinder and that's how you get a three-tiered cake, right? And so hopefully if there's one thing you learned from today, I want it to be that whenever you need to create this kind of tiered cake structure, it doesn't have to be a real cake. Like there's plenty of places where you would need this kind of geometry, for example, in like automotive parts, anything related to a drivetrain, whether it's the wheels, the rims, the hubs, probably is going to have something that's made like this. I want you to consider using a revolve where you can make the whole cake in one feature instead of extruding three times. So that's the main points in terms of this revolve feature. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you think I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. And especially keep this in mind as we start to think about the challenges that you're going to pick for this week, both in class and the homework, it may perhaps be relevant to one or more of them. All right. If there are no questions there, I'll move on to the second demonstration, which is the loft. And so this is perhaps one that you used in CAD 3 when you're doing the robot and maybe you had like a shell for it. A loft is essentially connecting two regions that are in different planes. So when we did CAD 3, that extra plane was kind of another plane. For the challenges for this week, you don't actually have to create any planes. I made sure of that. So don't worry about what I just did if you don't know what that is. But to give kind of a more typical demonstration of what a loft is, I'll create this. And so let's say I have these two shapes that are kind of in different places. You can see they're not at any points 